Hello, everybody, and welcome. Hello, Joel. There's our speaker. I see a TV set. Uh, that looks interesting. All right, so, um, okay, we're, Can you hear me? yeah, we're starting. Uh, if Joel, if you could wait, and I'll introduce you. I know how excited you are to get started, but um, let people come in, and then we'll go. So, hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to uh, Moodle MOOC 4. In the month of June, there I see you twice, Joel. That's interesting. Um, and today's session is really exciting because it's about the European projects. And if you don't know much about it, I think it's time you learned. So there's our speaker. You can see our speaker is there with a star. That's Joel. And a little bit about Joel Josephson. Um, Joel has spoken at TEDx events at one specifically on education and the creative classroom. Uh, he's a partner, and notice the number here, 25 European Union-funded educational projects. And I think there are a lot more. Uh, Europe's doing amazing work in education. His expertise is in innovating in education through creative ideas. So if you need ideas, Joel is the man. Uh, he likes to uh, integrate arts and music and technology on any topic. His quote is, and pay attention, we should be educating our children for their futures and not our past. Now this is really powerful. Think about it as you listen to our speaker. So there is your PowerPoint presentation. Thank you, Joel. I'm going to go over to my other laptop and uh, see how things are going there. So thank you. And I'm off. Uh, hi, uh, Nelly, can you actually hear me? Um, at the moment, the video, Every... uh, certainly my speakers Let... are not working through my headset. Well, so we don't get all this. You're using two computers. And I can Sorry? I can see two. I just paused the recording so we don't get this. You're using two um, two computers, so I can see Joel twice. Um, so I don't know if that is affecting how you feel, but we can hear you perfectly well, and we can see you, Joel. It's just that we see another TV there or something or other. Oh, it's not yours. Okay, so that's fine. So we see you and everything is fine. So go ahead. I'll be in the background if you need me. And I believe WizIQ support is also here. So everyone, if you could just add in the chat box where you're from, and I'll resume the recording. The only problem is I'm not perfectly ready yet. Um... All right, so I'll pause the recording. And, um when we can start I'm gonna send myself something which i'm missing at the moment um so i'll just do that and then i'll be with can you. everybody uh, hear that's okay uh can that's okay uh, jo uh, can everybody hear was everybody able to hear joel if you could give us the thumbs up that you were able to hear joel that would be great people are coming in late anyways yeah joel everybody was able to hear you the sound was actually amazing so that's my new speakers no uh, so you're fine mm -hmm. okay So tell me when I should re resume. Uh, in the meantime, let me ask uh, some questions there. How many of you uh, live in Europe or have been involved in European uh, projects? If you could just write live Europe, uh, European projects. So Kirsten lives in Europe. And do you know anything about... Okay, you lived in Europe. <laughs> Great. I see everyone signing in. Yeah, isn't it, Diana? People from all over the world. Yes, it is exciting to think of the fact that we could be uh, in different parts of the world 
we look at the clock and we see different times and yet we're here. So if I ask you, what time is it? You're all going to give me different times. So let me ask you, what time is it where you are right now? Hi, Ray. Good to see you. So for me, it's 10.05 uh, a.m. And it's Eastern. It's in the morning, of course. We've got five in the afternoon. Five in the morning, John Davy. Well, wow, welcome. John Davy's in Australia. And we've got remote English at four in the afternoon. We've got 12, no, five past 12. Oh, okay, that's fine. We've got, yeah, we seem to be um, more or less in the same time zones. Okay, Nelly, I'm and good. three in the afternoon. Okay, so go ahead, Jewel. You sound great. You look wonderful. Break a leg. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to say something about Nelly first, actually, because um, I've actually, one way or another, known Nelly for how long? Seven, eight, nine years at least. Years, Joel. Met. If it's well, internet years, it's a lot more than that. Contacts that has stayed virtual over a very long time. And I think it's about time we changed. And not next week, because I'm, I'm away next week. But the week after, I'm inviting Nelly to meet me uh, for a coffee. Okay? It could happen. <laughs> Hopefully she, she heard that. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm trying to get my video. I've only got a very small video here, so I can see how I'm fitting in the frame. Um, okay, so hopefully I'm not moving around too much. I tend to move around. Okay, so what I want to do today is really talk about um, video, the use of video in language education. I'm going to explain about that using two different uh, projects. One of which is running at the moment, which is a really interesting project. And the other one um, uh, is this project was got to be one of the most successful projects I've ever been involved in. Um, using video. So the first one, let's go through sort of the big ideas. Um, uh, there you are. It's you, Nelly. You, you were in the second. Yeah, it's the second computer. Sorry, I'll put myself. Could you just make me bigger? Is that possible? Can you do it from your end? Do I have to do it from my end? Okay. So the first project was called uh, Video for All. And as it says there, the mission. Oh, I can move the focus. Okay. Um, is to compile a complete resource of all the ways we hope can be used in language education. That's a pretty big mission. And to help do it, we have a partnership from all over Europe. And what's most interesting is we've got most probably two of the best experts in Europe in using video uh, as part of the team and most of the rest of the team are actually uh, experts in language education so we brought all these sort of different diverse aspects together now um, the two video experts are Russell Stanoff who many of you may know from teacher training videos and his work is screen capture video and the other uh, guy involved in the project perhaps not so well known uh, by people here because he's not so huge on the networks as Russell, is a guy called Armin Hotman, who actually created the, and I'll write it in here actually, he actually created the European uh, Network for Video and Education, called Viducate, uh, which you can find literally just by typing in Viducate in, uh, in, in Google. But he's an incredible expert in how to use video as a tool as a media tool uh, on all the different aspects and levels and ideas that, that can be used. So we've got these two very interesting experts involved in the project, uh, plus uh, a number of pedagogic special, uh, specialists in video who are very up to date with these ideas. I won't list everybody. Um, and uh, so a great team to do this job. But a very interesting part of this job is that we need, and we promised, 
help from the crowd. So I'm going to talk about that later and how you can help. So let's move on about this this here project, as we say in England. Um, I suppose the question that has to be asked is uh, why, why uh, video? And it's a pretty easy answer, even for somebody who's not a specialist like me, because video allows listening, speaking, reading, and writing as skills within one single medium. It's, it's in fact, of course, we know that video is the ultimate medium, and it also, of course, it's the medium for today. Um, I've got two teenage daughters, and they live with music and video. This is how we connect today, and everything is becoming video. So we must focus down on how we can use that in uh, our education systems. And that's what this project is really about. Um, video, of course, offers a number of different uh, ways for language learning. Uh, thank you, uh, Hasse. I'll put the link to the chat. Um, uh, yeah, and I've got a list here, again, most of you know. I'm not just going to read lists to people. I think we're all in English to read quite well. <laughs> so that's not how I do presentations. I just wave my hands a lot and get blurry images. So I'll do a bit of hand waving. <laughs> um, but obviously, a perfect tool for um, language learning. In fact, any language learning. Now, in this project, we're going to cover all languages, so the ideas that we want to put into video are language transparent. It doesn't matter what language you're teaching, learning, video is appropriate. We're going to make it for all levels, uh, and we look at it obviously as a European project. We'll talk about the CEFR, the Common European Framework for References for London, uh, for, sorry, come on, the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. And we're going to be showing different examples of video, how to use video for the different levels, A1 up to C2. Um, it's got to be appropriate for all ages. So what may be appropriate for A1 uh, adults may not be appropriate for A1 children, small children, primary. So again, we're going to build all these different um, levels into the project as well. As in all languages, it's appropriate for all levels as well. So a whole mix of ideas there. Now, the big aims of the project are to integrate language teaching and learning in video practice. To create video practices that are language transparent. So it doesn't matter which language you're teaching. Practice can be adapted, or most of the practices adapted, even though we may give English language uh, examples, but it can be adapted for any language. We want to cover every possible use of video, which is a very big uh, <laughs> stick, very big idea to actually try to accomplish. And that's why we've got such a great and expanded team, and also are going to be going into some of these other learning sources as well. Um, we're going to teach how to make and edit video. Uh, as you'll see in the second project, uh, which I'm a huge believer that kids, our students, each other, we're all becoming video experts. And you know, it, it's, it's a, going to be a basic tool, like using the computer, driving a car, making videos. We need to be experts in this field because that's how we're going to be teaching in life. And I don't know, if I have time or two, and somebody reminds me, I'll tell you a story about my daughter and how she used video autonomously to learn. Um, and obviously, video is a very effective tool for language learning. Um, when we do European projects, uh, we have to put in proposals for uh, maybe 80 to 100 pages. We write them as a team, um, but we have to give very clear deliverables. What are we going to do inside the project? How are we going to get it done? 
and just click the side. Um, so I'm going to go further into each of these different deliverables as I answer your children's presentation. We're going to do a search on the use of video in the language of education. In fact, we've already done that. Um, we're now just adapting our website, which to the public yet to include uh, this repository of ideas and research on the use of video in language education. And we're using that very much as a background to help us um, build further ideas. Um, we're going to create a best practices repository. And this, in fact, the core and the big job and project. The rest is, in a sense, exploiting these ideas and then teaching teachers how to use these ideas. We're going to, have to develop piloting materials that will need testing. And again, this is one of the reasons why we want to get involved with Crowd, because you can help us test these materials, because there's going to be a lot of them, and we need a lot of tests. We're going to create an in-service teacher training course, which will be online and offline. So we want as many teachers as possible to come in, to use the practices, to try them out, to learn how to use them, so they become competent in this area. And we're going to be doing, as I say, online and offline, also delivering workshops on those practices. So a very big project, you know, a, a lot to do, uh, but with a really, really good team. So hopefully we'll have a bit of fun in the end as well. Now let's go a little bit further into what we mean by all these deliverables, because those are very broad ideas. Um, the research that we've done that is completed um, includes academic literature. We've looked at case studies from other areas and best practices. There's been a number of other EU projects, like I just talked about um, uh, the Vigicate project, which I saw somebody was kind enough to put up a link to Vigicate for us. So that's just one there. Thank you, Hassan. Yes, it's Hassan. Uh, and, obviously, and also we're including there some really nice internet tools. And I specifically, uh, as part of this research, have been looking at um, uh, cell phone uh, tools because there's some really, really neat tools now uh, that we can use on our phones. Um, for example, I just throw one in because I love it. Uh, it is one called YouTube Capture. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but you can actually just download it straight onto your phone. You can make um, a stop motion video in seconds, edit it, add music, and throw it straight back up onto YouTube. And within literally minutes, you have a, a working video clip. It's a really, really great tool to use. So we talk about all these things and how they can be used. I just throw my favorite in because I, I love it. Okay, let's go. Um, now, we're really now talking about the core of the project. This is the big, the big idea. Is we're going to put up at least 50 language practices. In fact, we're now working on this area, and it's happening. Uh, in fact, we've got over 50. And we're then going to show how those different practices can be used at all the different levels that I spoke about earlier, like the age levels, the CEFR levels, and obviously we want to keep uh, keep within the concept of green language and uh, locality uh, uh, transparent, so you can use them for any language and at any locality. That's a very big idea, and also very soon we're going to be asking the crowd to actually help with that. I'm just looking. What I'm going to put up just now is a link to a document which is on Box, where you can actually uh, complete your name, um, who you are and where you are, there it goes, and actually join in as an associate partner to help the project. It's not a paid role, it's a very limited role, you know, it's just a voluntary way you can help us. But if you go to that document, you'll find my email address where you'll send it to, and uh, actually sort of sign up to help the project. We'll keep you informed. Maybe you can do 
doing some piloting for us, some dissemination in your areas. You know, it, it's a really nice project to get involved in. And you'll be at the forefront of everything that we do by helping us out in this way. So that's, that's the big idea of the project. So I already mentioned just then um, about testing and testers, uh, because within our deliverables, as we're now discussing the deliverables, well, I'm discussing, you're listening, guys, <laughs> um, we, we actually need at least 80 people or 80 schools to test. Um, that's a lot of people, because we need a, we're going to have an enormous amount of material to test. We actually think we may actually get up to 300 different practices. So there's, you know, we really are trying to make the complete uh, library, the complete area of ideas. We will also put up feedback and evaluation forms there and questionnaires because we need your comments. Um, and as Nelly just said, the testing can be online and offline. But being a European project, we need that documented. So that's perhaps why we tend to think um, of teachers working with testing the ideas out with students uh, outside the classroom. But of course, it can be both. And as again, uh, of course, video is very much open to informal learning. It doesn't have to be in the course. So it does give, you know, again, this is perhaps what we should actually say at the very beginning is why video is a great tool, because it's an autonomous tool that students can use for them. To move on, this slide's taking a couple of seconds. Just I mentioned the teacher training that we want to do. And we're actually going to be putting together a complete course. Now, it's a little bit confusing, the course. We haven't got the details of it yet because the European Union changed um, the actual way that these courses are funded. So we're still working with them on, on it at the moment. But we're very much looking to make this uh, a face-to-face -face course over the course of five days, which will be open to European teachers. I'm afraid they only give from European teachers within to pay for people to come to the courses. Theoretically, um, I'm not quite sure about this. It's an interesting question is whether people from outside of Europe could actually fund themselves and pay us to actually attend the course as well. I think it'd be more a question of space than whether we can do it here. But again, we're actually going to be doing some workshops as well. The partners in the project will be doing face-to-face -face workshops, uh, maybe for about one or two hours in that area, and we'll also be doing a number of workshops online. Uh, we'll introduce the project like I'm doing now, but we'll also be using some of those best practices and using them for testing with you guys and showing you how they work. Okay, so I've now moved on to the second project. At the end of the project, I will be uh, giving links. Uh, sorry, at the end of the project, at the end of this uh, presentation, I will be giving links to all of my projects uh, that I've talked about in a minute. I'm just going to put one link up for you right now, which is the Facebook page of uh, Video Fall, because the, the website's not quite ready yet, as I say, for the, the repository. Um, that's the Facebook page. You can go there straight now and like the project. And of course, we're putting all our news up. On, on Facebook, so you'll be able to, you'll find out when we're moving on with the project and the website is up and the resources are up. So we use Facebook very much as a news source as, as well as um, to create interest around the project. Now I'm going to go on to popular. Before I do that, um, I want to play a video. Uh, am I going to control that, Nelly, or do you want to do that? Okay, now this is an intro video we made for um, Popular, and it's, it's very much about promoting the project, so let's see if we can play it. Popular. 
केला European Union project that is possibly the best language project ever for secondary students. But first, check students singing their Spanish song. The students wrote, acted, videoed and edited this song. These Spanish students not only wrote their song, but wrote the music and played it as well. Brilliant job. Your students can take part in the popular project too. Go to the website www.popular.eu and see how you can take part. Okay, so hopefully everybody can still hear me. Um, I actually, mine was just a little bit jumpy, but it, it worked, so that's, that's good. Um, I'm not going to talk too long about Popular, but it, it's a project that's actually finished that is still, even though we're officially finished, it's still running. And it's an incredible project. In fact, um, I see one of my colleagues from that project and also from Video for All has joined us, Susanna from Spain. And uh, we've, and she's done amazing work in the Popular project. Um, she was responsible for the Spanish songs for Spanish students. Uh, um, I don't know how many schools in Spain. We've had over 50, I think, so far. Um, we've actually got so far on the playlist for the project 65 videos so far made by students. Um, and can, have I got the playlist? Yes, I have. And this is the playlist for the project. If anybody wants to go and have a look at the videos, um, there you go. Uh, so, oh, it's almost 100 now, Susanna? Yeah, okay, <laughs> almost 100. But I don't think they're all on my playlist, so you're going to have to send me the ones that I'm missing, uh, Susanna, okay? Uh, so let's, let's have a look at the ideas behind this project. Um, it actually started because of my daughters, who are teenagers. And um, I saw how much they were passionate about their music. So I wanted to bring this music that they love into education. And what happened was this project. And what we've tried to do here is bring in music, video, ICT competences, and language competences all within one project and stay in an area where uh, students are passionate. Because if we can bring passion into education, then they learn, and they learn extremely well. Um, so this pro uh, I've already said um, the basic ideas. Obviously, we can add to that the idea of being creative and making partnerships across Europe. And for teachers, um, it's very much, it's been a very, very interesting project because it really goes to this new way of thinking in education where teachers become facilitators and guides. And in the popular project, the students were very autonomous in what they did and the teachers were very much facilitators to the students. They weren't teaching the students, the teachers, the students 
were teaching themselves. So we better have a look at how this project ran, ran and what it is. And I should mention that we have a very large resources available on the website, and I'm just going to put the link to the website up there. Um, so I, I know it's been put up once, but I'll put it up again. Um, okay. Um, where you can find um, videos, uh, uh, sorry, all, all the resources for this project. One of the nice things about this project, though, is that even though it was made for secondary school students because we thought the level of competences would require secondary, we've now actually seen it being used in special needs schools and even down to primary level. Although with primary, the teacher does have to give more help, um, obviously to replace that lack of experience and knowledge. Um, but that's fine. It still works and still motivates as a project and works well. So the idea of the project is this, is that the teacher introduces the project to the students and let, says to them, you're going to write a song, but first of all, you've got to select a song. So the students then have a choice to work in groups, small groups, or as the whole classroom. It's their choice. And this is going to be the word during the, the whole uh, project is about choice, because they make all the choices, and that's why it's autonomous. So they have to select a song. It can be anything they like. It can be rap, uh, hip hop, it could be heavy metal. They make that choice. And as we can see with the Spanish schools and with other schools, they've actually written their own songs and played them as well. They then write their own lyrics. So they're making their own song, uh, writing their own song, and they put that into the target language that they're learning. So that's a very interesting exercise. It's not a translation. It's actually um, an adaptation and use of language, which is much more interesting than just translating. Um, they then create a video of themselves singing that song. Now, in fact, it goes a lot further than just making a video. Um, we've had uh, videos from students where they've written complete stories. They've directed themselves, they edit themselves, they film themselves, they promote themselves, they do the whole thing. It's a complete production job. And again, think of all the different skills that requires. So, uh, and then they take their resulting video, upload it onto uh, YouTube, and then put it onto the wiki of this, the project. Now, uh, just, I'm gonna put the wiki spaces um, site up again because that's about the right time to do it I think. Now what we did with the uh, with a wiki is that each uh, group asked us through their teachers generally for a page and you'll find on the on the wiki that I've just given the link to I, I can't remember how pa many pages I think it's over 80 or 90 pages some of the student which then belong to the students. Um, they can then use that page to put up the lyrics, put up something about themselves, and of course put up their videos. And you'll see the site is full of the videos that they've made. It's a really nice uh, way of the kids to be in a safe space and to share what they do. Um, that's half the project, because then those that same group of students have to go to the wiki and find another song made by another group of students, anywhere they like, except not in their native language, of course, and make their version of that song so using the music, the, uh, the music of the, um, uh, that the students have used, but, and the lyrics, but placing those lyrics into their native language. So if it was uh, an English group of students, uh, they've sang their song perhaps in French, then the Spanish kids would take the French-English version and put it into Spanish. And then they make a second video with the same parameters as the first, uh, that they make their own story, their own song, uh, edit, direct, act, sing, and put that resulting video up onto, um, up onto the internet for everybody to see. Um, so that's the basic idea of the project. 
if you would like to take part in this project, and uh, you'll find all the um, resources online, uh, and I'll put the video, uh, he here's the links in fact, the links are here as well. What are you missing? I, th I may just put all of them up again actually, I think I'll put all of them up again. Um, so wait a minute. A description of what each of those links are. Okay, there you are. They've jumped around a bit, but they're all there now. Okay. okay. You'll also find um, on the website, on the resources page, a link to what we call the student step-by-step -step guides, which I haven't linked here. Uh, I don't know, Susanna, if you could go and quickly grab uh, the uh, flipbook link. But this is um, um, a flipbook that we made, which is online, and just runs through the basic ideas of the project uh, students and it's been an incredibly successful document and that's actually been the one um, that students have used uh, almost exclusively to um, make their songs. Uh, I don't know if you heard that Sus Susanna, can you just try and find the link to the flip book I didn't include it here in English please if you can find it. Okay so it's, it's a perfect example of Okay, th thank you very much, Susanna. There's the link to the flipbook. Um, it's a really nice tool, uh, a nice online way of, you, of um, interacting for the students. Um, so this project is a perfect example of how video could be used as a wonderful tool within language learning. And, and as I say, you can actually join this project, ask me for a page on the wiki, and use this as your first uh, tool to use uh, for um, video in language learning. There are no uh, restrictions as far as usage. Any country in the world, we've got uh, um, schools in North Africa, in Tunisia, in the USA, in Israel, all outside of Europe, so um, using uh, this project. Okay, uh, my last page I think is just a reiteration of the links to the first project, the Video for All project. Um, you can see the website link, as though as I say the website is not actually ready yet. Uh, the Facebook page, and I'll just put up again the um, link to the document where you can actually sign up for the project. Just send that to me, we'll acknowledge it, and you can help the, a video for a project um, with testing and with ideas of your own of how we can use video in education. So that's my, that's my speech for today. Thank you very much. That's enough. Uh, questions, if you wish. Uh, yeah, uh, Susanna's just put up a really, really nice link um, where the students themselves actually talk about uh, the work that they did and how much they enjoyed it and what they gained from it, uh, which is a really nice uh, way of really understanding what this project means and can, and can give to your students because it's the students telling us. So, um, has anybody got any questions about the... I do. The color of my socks? Go on, Nelly. Hit me. All right. Are you ready? I'll hit you... Uh, what do I have? I'll hit you with a bell. Uh, Joel, okay. can you take us... Can you screen share? I'm really curious. Can you screen share and take us in there from the back end to show us the kind of things that are happening so that we can see how we can crowdsource and help out? You mean with which project, Nelly? I'm talking about the the video for all project. Ah, how you can help? No, if we can, yeah. if you can take us in there and show us what it looks like before we email you and get involved. Ah, yeah. Well, if you go to the link that I gave, and I'll give it again. Uh, hang on. I uh, know I actually just gave it a couple of seconds ago. But I'll give it again. 
But um, in, in this document, it's a one-page document you'll find on Box, you, you, you'll you see all the areas where we're asking for help and what we... Yeah, I realize that. But can you take us in there to make it live? Uh, yeah. Uh, hang on. Wait a minute. And that, that means I've got to, hang on, I've just got to get it up. So. Just oh, just click on it. All you need to do is, get the you just need to go into screen share, oh, click yeah, on it. To... Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think you want to do it from here in case I have a problem uh, some t you know, with memory on, the, on this computer. So but we'll have a go. If you lose me, thank you very much for coming. I'll try to get it up. Hang on, just a sec. I've got my uh, mic open in case uh, yeah. you get lost or something. Yeah, it looks like it's coming up. Yeah, it's very slow. Uh, okay, all right, I've got that. Uh, I could theoretically screen share it um, if I can work out how to do that. How do I screen share, Nelly? Oh, um, you go into screen share. There, the screen share. Uh, yeah, okay, screen share, got it. Okay, let's see how this goes. Let's see. It says it takes 30 to 60 seconds to get up, so. I think um Samira is asking, apart from song projects, but other projects can work well with teenagers. Um, very quickly, I'll answer that while, while we're waiting. Is um, I'm also involved, uh, have been involved in initiating some projects on large-scale game-based learning. Uh, all of those, unfortunately, have finished now, uh, but we will have more into the future. Ah, okay. It says. Screen sharing couldn't start due some due to some technical issue. Try launching it again. So we'll try once more. If we don't get it this time, then um Oh you're not on a desktop, are you? It's better to be on a desktop and then you don't get all of that. Um, Joel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, no okay. problem. So it, it doesn't happen. Okay. okay. So what I'll do, I'll just um Copy paste um, the, the the section. Hopefully, it will come straight out of here. I don't know. I don't know if I can copy paste off of this screen. Off this document. Let's see if it works. Okay, and then we can read through them. So this, yeah, that looks like it happened. All right. So the, there, this is literally out of the document that I've given the link to. Um, that we're looking for your ideas and examples of how to use video and language learning. And we will actually put a template up on uh, the net where you can just enter your ideas. So that's that's one. Oh, that's good. You're going to put it on the white, whiteboard, Nelly? Yep. Or am I doing that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe maybe we're both doing it. No, no, that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, okay. Um, that was my daughter. Say hello to my daughter. Diving hello, in. daughter. Um, <laughs> okay, she had her end of, uh, just so you know where I'm in my life, uh, she actually had her end of middle school party last night, which went on to 2.30 in the morning. So I'm not quite as fresh as I normally am because I had to pick her up. <laughs> um, okay, back to this. All right, we're going to be asking people... Uh, and again, this can be from around the world, really, to pilot examples of the videos and the best practices that we're going to actually make. Um, and again, you know, if, if you fill in the form on the um, on the box document, uh, the document we're now sort of looking at, um, we will send you information when it's ready and where you'll find all these best practices. So. It will be easy to do. And the third area we need help with so it is to disseminate the project. Because obviously this is a very big project. And our success, in a sense, uh, is um, 
related to the amount of people who are interested in the project and start using the resources that we make, because that's what we've been paid to do, to make resources that can be used. And that's our job within these projects. And of course, if anybody's got any other ideas, we're always open to your thoughts and your ideas. So that's... Um, I, many asked a $100 question about will people be paid. Um, within what, The problem with these um, European projects is that at proposal stage, which is competitive proposals, actually have to define every single euro that we're asking for and where it's going to be spent. And we can't change it once that project's being funded because we're under contracts. Um, so we can use, ask for help of people like yourselves to help with uh, these sort of things. But we, we don't ask for sort of days of work. We're just asking for very limited help um, in, in the ways that I explain. So we can't actually pay people uh, from the project to do this sort of stuff for us. In a sense, you know, uh, our job is to make resources for in schools, I think that's 400,000 schools across the whole of Europe, um, and, and that's how we have to do it. That, that's just how the game goes. Um, at least, in a sense, I look at it this way, as the European Union is actually paying through R&D, really, research and development uh, of quality resources. And the only way you can get quality is by testing and feedback. So that's very much what we look at. Um, but you know, being the sort of educators we are, we really understand that the more contributions, the more open we are, um, uh, will be the quality of um, what we get um, back. I noticed this, I can't see who has put some actual ideas. Um, all the ones that we see here are already in the list of uh, different um, apps and ideas that we're actually going to be showing and making best practices um, of. But as I say, we're going to be having at least 50 different ideas, and those will be refined further. I think there's one thing I must say, is we're actually going to be making videos of how to use the best practices as well. So it's not just going to be a bit of text. We'll be going to be going further and showing with videos how to use those video practices. So it's, it's a very big project. Okay, other questions, possibly? Yeah. Oh, the YouTube ad. Yeah, it's called, um, uh, hang on, I'll go a step further. Uh, it's actually called YouTube Capture. And uh, I'm just opening it up on my phone now and try and show it to the camera. Um, come on, phone. Oh, no, you can't really see it. It's just it's the, just the normal screen capture, so uh, let's move it that way. So you know, I I, I could literally just make a video now of us, <laughs> of you guys, of Melicon, and have that up on the internet before we finish this session. It's it's really such a great tool to use. Very simple. Okay. Joel, not about uh, money. Schools of those yeah. Help get free access. That's okay. the question. This is uh, another good question by Nelly. All the resources we make are open source resources. It's a very important. It's, um, it used to be that some projects um, did try to maintain their, um, their projects through commercialization. I never believed in it. And in none of my projects um, do I uh, are the resources uh, have been commercialized. I'm very much against the idea. The only thing we once did is we did a project called Folk DC, where we actually used folk music in seven different. Um, I think it was 36 songs we actually recorded and played, and we did offer the CD, but. I now actually put all the songs that we had up on SoundCloud. So again, that's as a free resource because I believe that's how it should be. Um, also, with the Folk DC, uh, Folk DC project, not Folk DC, Lullabies of Europe project, we made seven videos, uh, lullabies in seven different languages, 
and those are up on my YouTube channel and those have been actually vote viewed 16 million times so that's a resource that's really been used and very much as an open source so a great way of disseminating and creating resources for education so all schools uh, can for example go to the using the example we, we've shown here the popular project you can go to the popular website you'll find there's a resources tab you'll click on the resources tab you'll see there's resources for teachers for students and other resources and you can just take them and they're there for the take um, Adjare, uh, Adjare, hopefully I've said that correctly, asked, uh, the project is currently for European countries, how will you integrate other nations as well? Um, well, in Video for All, we're making that language transparent. It, uh, the resources, uh, and much of the, uh, not all of the resources, much of the resources are going to be translated into the languages of the project. And obviously that's limited because of the cost of translation. Um, those are going to be Spanish, Italian, Bulgarian, Czech. Uh, I think there's one other, and I just can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Susanna, do you remember the languages for Video for All? Um, but in some projects we've actually... Romanian, thank you. Thank you, Nelly. Is that right? Romanian? Yeah. I'm going to have to check it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. I can't give a definitive. Okay, there's Suzanne. Uh, German, of course, German, German. Uh, yeah, and, and Italian. No, because we don't have a partner uh, from an Arabic country. So we don't have that in uh, Arabic. Obviously, again, you know, if a partner or somebody does, would like to translate, um, then obviously we're really, really happy about that. Um, and in some projects um, that I've been involved in, the one just right now, we've actually had uh, resources translated into Catalan by volunteers. Uh, we've, in another project, we had uh, the website translated into Russian by a volunteer. So obviously we're very interested uh, and very grateful for that sort of help. But Within the framework of a European project, we have to say at the very beginning um, what languages uh, the partners are capable of translating and or we want to put into translation uh, and work with those. But, you know, again, if anybody is kind enough to help us translate into additional languages, welcome is not, you're more than welcome. <laughs> it's extremely helpful for us. Um, Susanna's just mentioned there about um, what in Europe is called LW, uh, um, less widely taught and uh, spoken languages, which is an issue in Europe. It means any language which is not German, Spanish, English, or French is very much a focus of the European Union in our projects. Um, in this project, as I say, we have Bulgarian, Italian, and German, no, German is a, not a literate language, of Bulgarian. So we, 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 we particularly focus on those. Brian, if you'd like to translate into Welsh, you are extremely welcome. We'd love to have it. Uh, by the way, I should mention the popular project. It's been really nice because we've actually had songs, uh, one song in particular that uh, um, Susanna helped with, um, which has been translated uh, into Arabic and into Basque. I think those are the two other languages, uh, as well as a number of European languages. So it's really nice to see students actually using their own languages there. Um, I did see, I think I mentioned that the USA is already involved, um, Susanna. So, yeah, now Charles asks a nice question um, about the privacy issues. Um, first of all, there's two issues on this. Um, number one, um, the students are over the age of 12, which is usually where this privacy issue is a real problem. Um, 
but we do also have put up and very often use permission uh, from parents uh, uh, forms onto you know, into our projects that can be downloaded by teachers and then given and distributed to the parents to gain permission. Um, so yeah, it's something very, we're very aware of and we do deal with. We never mention the children's names in our video, in our projects, of course, even if they are over the age of 12, unless they specifically allow it. Um, so, you know, we're aware of the issues and we offer um, permission forms if the teachers require them and we uh, work that way. Personally, I think, you know, this is a little bit of, uh, and again, this is a personal view. It's, it's an even, and I've got children, of course, as well, so it's not that, it is based on my personal experience. I think there's a lot of um, overreaction on these issues. Um, you know, you've got a kid's face on a video, so what? You know, what's, what's going to happen? But as I say, that's my personal uh, opinion. Okay, it looks like we've got to finish in uh, five minutes, just under five minutes, so I should really wrap up. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank very much Nelly for inviting me to speak here. Um, I know Nelly has <laughs> been asking me for, for a while, so I'm very pleased to actually have the opportunity and to have been invited. Um, and uh, who else do I need to... Oh yes, the audience, of course. Thank you all very much for attending. Uh, and so many great comments and feedback. It was, it was really, really nice to see. Um, new projects, we're always working on new projects. Um, but we do tend to look at the people that we've worked with in the past. We do bring expertise in. If you have a particular expertise and you live in Europe, do please write to me. Um, you'll find my email. Is it? Let's just put that back up so everyone knows there the presentation uh, that's coming up there. Yeah, you'll see my email down the bottom there, joel at kindersite.info. So you're very welcome to write to me and we'll talk. Um, very, you know, I'm always open to your ideas and people's input. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for attending. Thank you, Nelly. And um, I take a bow. <laughs> How do you take a virtual bow? Okay, let's. Okay, that's to be solved by the next time you see me present. How do you do a virtual bow? <laughs> okay. So all you need to practice, you stand up. <clears throat> um, Joel, I guess you don't hear me. You stand up and you bow. That's how you do it. Or you curtsy if, um, if you've got a skirt there. That's how you do it. You're, you're live. You're live. This, this is not a virtual class. This is a real class in real time. The only difference is we can't touch one another. I mean, physically, but we can in other ways. So thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Okay, Nelly. Nelly, I'm not sure if I should be who has such beautifully arranged shelves behind them instead of the usual mess on the desk. So I'm just going to see if I can show them my mess on the desk to show that I'm a real not like Nelly. Nice and, Have you uh, seen the green background? Do you know about the green background? There's green background that you can put anything behind you. So next time, just get a green background and then put whatever, whatever you want behind. Oh, so, oh, so that's a picture. Not actually your <laughs> you're cheating. Emma. <laughs> okay. Nelly, not next week, the week after whenever, get in contact and let's meet. Okay. I'm in Finland yeah, next fine. week, so unless you come to Finland, we're not gonna meet next week. But in it's the week after because uh the, okay. when is, what day is it today? So next week I'm in Spain. Oh, oh so maybe we can meet on the plane or something. Maybe we can meet on the plane on the way, on the way. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we're going to continue the discussions, Joel. There is a link there that Tom has added. I hope you're able to uh, get it. I also added it. 
So um, here it is again. Just join and let's continue the discussions. There are lots of questions still to go. We don't have to continue them now. We can continue them later whenever we have time because it's in the course feed. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going. Bye. <laughs> Bye now.